Today we're here at the Moto IQ garage and we're going to be installing a new fuel system into my Project 350Z which is a competitive drift car. We have a brand new fuel cell from FuelSafe, a new surge tank from Radium, and new pumps from AM Performance Electronics. Rathena's car before was like a pro-am car and she had the minimum stuff to get around and pass tech. Instead of having a fuel cell, she had a aluminum box in the back of her car that held gas and that wasn't exactly safe. So we're going to start off by talking about the fuel cell we have here, which is broken up into four components. We have the plate, the container, the bladder, and then the foam. Well, one of the cool things about the fuel safe fuel cell is that it's uh, FIA and SFI certified, so it's legal in all forms of motorsports from road racing to drifting to rally, drag racing. It's approved and it's got to pass tech. That's one of the most important things. So when we dissect the fuel cell, first you have the top plate. The top plate usually contains your filler and venting and access to the interior of the cell. Now we're not going to use the uh, one that came with the cell, but we're going to replace that with this radium part, but we'll get into that later. So take off the top plate, then you can take off the, uh, the cover and then get to the cool stuff inside. So in your car, the bladder is going to be contained in this aluminum enclosure. The bladder is a fuel-proof, fabric-reinforced container that's like soft and it's really tough and it's uh, puncture resistant. So if you get into a violent crash and the back of the car deforms or gets torn apart, the fuel cell is going to just hold up and not let any fuel spill. The final thing is the fuel cell is stuffed full of foam. It acts like a baffle to prevent the fuel from sloshing uncontrollably in there. So we're going to be using some AEM ethanol approved fuel pumps. Now these are submersible pumps and they flow 340 liters per hour at 40 psi. So we have two pumps. We have a lift pump to bring the fuel into the surge tank and we have pressure pump to feed the motor. Now uh, what we're doing is we're using the Radium FCST. Now that's an in-tank system that contains the surge tank the fuel pumps and everything in one unit that bolts right into the fuel safe fuel cell. The surge tank is a small capacity tank but it has enough fuel for the engine to run you know quite a few seconds on. There's a lift pump that keeps the surge tank full to the brim so even if the fuel gets interrupted from the lift pump for a few seconds the engine has a good solid fuel supply to run on and you'll never experience starvation until you're fully out of gas. A lot of guys will run like an external surge tank and you have to have a lot of extra plumbing, like a pump outside of the tank and you have to find room for it. It's another thing that can get damaged in the crash that could leak fuel. But with Radium Solution, it puts everything right in the fuel cell. It's all self-contained, simple. Uh, you don't have to have lines, pumps, or wiring going all over the place. Let's say you get a bad crash and the fuel filler gets ripped out of the car. You actually have a one-way check valve in the fill neck, so the fuel can be poured in, but there's no way fuel is coming out of here. Now you have the option of putting a, your fuel filler cap directly to this, or in, like in your case, you're going to be running this uh, remote cap at the end of the uh, fuel filler hose, so you can easily uh, fill up your car without opening your hatch, yeah. right? You know, like every fuel cell or fuel tank needs a vent. You know, otherwise you'd pull a vacuum and it'd be really hard for the pumps to pump the fuel out once you get to a certain point. But what's cool about this is your vent has a one-way check valve. So when it hits a certain level of vacuum, it'll open up and relieve the vacuum. Other cool things is um, all the uh, plumbing things to run multiple fuel pumps, return lines are all on the uh, outside. Right here are real easy to access. They're all uh, AN, so your AN fittings for your pump output can just screw right here and your return line screw to here. Also all your wiring. It's all like mil-spec type connectors, so you just plug them in. Uh, you can run up to three pressure pumps, so if Let's say you're making a 6,000 horsepower motor later. Right now you have an NA LS3, but like let's say when you supercharge later, we can add a couple more fuel pumps so you can have fuel until, you know, 1,000 yeah. horsepower, no problem. Makes it easy. It's all scalable, you don't have to get anything new. 
So we'll start off by taking this whole thing apart. We'll go over the components that are inside and we'll also show you how to properly install the fuel pumps into the system as well. So we're gonna start off by taking these nine three millimeter Allen bolts that hold the top plate to the surge tank. Next, we're gonna remove this filler hose. The filler hose uh, transfers the fuel from the lift pump to the surge tank. Next, we're gonna be taking off this hanger in order to mount the fuel pump. The hanger has uh, locations for up to three pressure pumps. That's where you get your scalability from to match your power level to the amount of uh, pump capacity you have. So we're gonna start off by installing the fuel pump that goes on the pressure side. A good pro tip is adding some lubrication to the uh, hose ends and that'll help you put the hose on a lot easier. Next we're gonna reinstall the hanger and then we're gonna tighten it back up with a four millimeter Allen wrench. Okay, now we wanna put the sock on. So the sock just slips over the fuel inlet. Then you have to install this retaining clip. And it just presses down. And now it's good to go. Now um, on to pump two. So we have to put the transfer tube in. This. I want to make sure it's all the way to the bottom. So you want to measure how deep your fuel cell is. So to the bottom, to the top of the flange is like eight and a quarter. Okay. So from this flange to the bottom of the sock has to be eight inches. Put that measuring tape out. Let me know when the sock is at. Oh, uh, we have to come up a little bit. And just a little bit more. Okay, right there. So now we're going to connect this filler hose. Let's go ahead and plug this in too while we're here. And then we put the two hose clamps that holds that in place. Now we're going to finish up tightening down the clamps. And now we're going to put down the bracket that holds down fuel filler tube. Now we put the search tank in. Our FCST came plumbed for two pumps, so we're actually capping off one of the fittings with an aluminum AN cap. Okay, we had hooked up the pump to the plug with the red and black wires, so when we hook the pigtail harness into the car, we have to remember these two supply the pump. Uh, this is a mil-spec type connector that plugs right into here, and then we're good to go. Now we have our SCST all put together, and why don't you put the top plate in? Let's do it. We'll put the gasket on. Now let's drop this bad boy in. Yeah. I'll just hand tighten a few first. So Rathina is doing this in a cross pattern and she's going to get down snug and then uh, bring it up to torque bit by bit. The fuel cell surge tank is finally in the fuel cell. We finished installing it. Next thing we got to do is just bolt on the plate to the container and then we're going to install this bad boy into the car. When mounting the uh, fuel cell into the chassis, we constructed a cage for the cell. Now the cage is like a sturdy support that holds the uh, cell. It's actually welded into your chassis. Mm -hmm. On the cage, we welded these nuts like into the structure here. So the nuts will go uh, through the top plate, through the case and into this. Nice and easy and we don't have to deal with hidden nuts. There she goes, nice and strong, ready to drop into the car. This came out pretty good. I mean, I can't believe you did it all in a day. I know. It's a really clean installation, and like you said, it didn't, didn't take too long. I know, like, this fuel cell is designed to go in with minimal crazy fabrication. I mean, you had to do some things, like build the fuel cell cage, cutting out the floor. Uh, you even had to cut the cross member and plate it, but it was nothing that, like, uh, somebody with a MIG welder couldn't handle at home. Right. 
your old fuel cell was just sit up, sit here on the floor and it was up here all high. Now it's all flush with the floor, down low, and I bet your car's going to handle better because of that. Having a rear set fill plate is a cool feature because it actually puts the pumps right where the fuel sloshes to under acceleration. It's really important to run a pre-filter on, on your pumps and uh, the socks are actually a pretty good pre-filter and, and you have an aeromotive uh, main filter here so filtration's not going to be an issue. Another thing that you took care of real nicely is wiring up your fuel pump. You use a nice heavy gauge wire uh, straight to the power source so you don't have the current drop and your pump's going to put out the rated output that way and you have a good protective fuse. Having a fuse to the pump is critical because you have a short, you don't want glowing red hot stuff going on in your fuel tank. You know, like AEM makes a really cool uh, pump protective module that's fused correctly. That's a great thing to use. And the way everything's set up too, just, I mean, in the case of a pump failure, I don't, it'll be really, really easy to service. The rear set fill plate was designed with FD's five minute competition timeout rule in mind. Uh, the plate was designed to be removed and replaced easily within five minutes. I love this whole setup we have here. I mean, thanks to FuelSafe for the cell and radium engineering, with the, the surge tank setup, and then AM performance electronics with the pumps. I mean, the whole setup was just super easy to install, um, just an easy to put together package. I'm pretty excited to test this entire setup out, so please stay tuned for videos on when I give it a proper shakedown. Make sure to subscribe um, to our channel and stay tuned with Moto IQ and everything that we have going on here. Until next time.